Hello there guys, my name is Alexander and today I'm here to show you our flagship product, Arbitrage Screener. This video will be helpful to both beginners and professionals, but probably beginners will make the most out of it. So today I'm gonna show you how to use our screener, how to make profits with the functionality that we deliver to you. Please note that all the functionality that I'm currently uh, showing you is actual for the beginning of February 20 year 2024. Probably, if you're seeing this in the near or far future, our team has added many, many great features and made your experience even better than now. Right, so let's take a look at the interface of our site. The main element that you will be working with is arbitrage table. So every row here is your potential arbitrage opportunity, so called spreads. Their quality, their amount and their type is determined by the filters that you are working with. Let's look over them. The first one is tracked exchanges. Here you should put all the exchanges that you are comfortable to work with. For example, I don't think that I am comfortable working with Ascendex. Let's also deselect Bitfinex, Bitmart, I don't know, maybe Corbit, uh, Probit, okay, and that's probably enough. The next filter is whitelist of currencies. I would not recommend using this filter to all the beginners. But if you know that you have some amount of tokens that you really want to arbitrage, you can put them into this filter like so, TBC, BTC, I don't know, ETH, and then uh, only the spreads with those currencies will show up in the screener. Currently, we don't have any spreads with uh, those currencies, so yeah, let's just deselect them. Also, we have a blacklist of currencies, and this filter is actually much, much more usable for even beginners. For example, if you have experience or knowledge about some scam tokens or tokens that you're always having problems with, you can put them here so they never show up. For example, the multi is one of the uh, nasty tokens that I don't want to ever, ever arbitrage. Next filter is minimal transaction amount. Here I put $100 to make it so that no deals with like $25 or $20, so uh, no small arbitrage opportunities are present in the table. The next filters are minimal profit and maximum profit. For the minimal profit, I would suggest that you put something like 0.5% here. Why is that so? So if you're dealing with low volume, probably anything that is below 0.5%, you will not just make any money, everything will be eaten up by the fees. And the maximum profit, I would suggest that you put something like 5 or even 2%. Yeah, 2% is much better, because every arbitrage opportunity that exceeds that spread is probably something sketchy, something that you will not really profit on. Please note that you are not alone in the market. There are a lot of people who are trying to arbitrage. More than that, there are a lot of algo trading bots that are better than you in any way in arbitraging. So probably if you have the spread that is like 50% or 20%, it is probably something wrong with it. And that is so because if it was like really really easy to do this someone will would do this before you so please note that zero and a half percent and two percent are those magic numbers that you want to work with all right next we have exchanges for buying and exchanges for selling so uh, it is actually basically the same as the first filter but for example if you have uh, some tokens on one exchange and you don't want to buy anything, just sell it, you would uh, do something like this. So you would clear and choose only Binance. So for example, if I hold token on some kind of token on Binance and then I want to sell it elsewhere, I would do something like this. But all right, I will select it all here. Okay, now we have a minimal lifetime. So this filter is actually really, really cool. What that means is that Minimal and maximum lifetime, they work in combined. Uh, so how do we measure a lifetime of a spread? So for example, here we have the spread on MLT USDT. Okay, yeah, just, yeah, let's not update uh, the table for now. So we have the spread AGLD USDT, and the lifetime here is four minutes, 50 seconds. That means that 
for 4 minutes and 50 seconds, the difference between the prices on Polonex and Binance has been more than 0.1%. So right now it's 1.98, but since the time that the spread between those exchanges was 0.1%, we track that pair. And the lifetime here is so the time that passed uh, from that moment. I would suggest that you uh, use maximum lifetime and put it something like 360 seconds, so 6 minutes. Uh, why is that so? The same reason why you don't trust spreads with 20% profits. Because if the spread is quite old, there is a chance that it is something sketchy going on with that, because no Alga trading bot has actually used this, it for its own advantage. All right, and next we have networks for withdrawal, networks for deposit. So every pair actually has a network that this currency is going on, which blockchain this currency is trading on. For example, it could be Ethereum, it could be XLM, it could be AVEX, whatever. And here you can pick any uh, network that you are comfortable working with. I would suggest that uh, when you pick the networks that you are w willing to work with, you probably maybe should exclude Ethereum because Ethereum actually has the highest fee of them all. So maybe you should select all the networks except Ethereum, but that's for your own consideration. All right. The same goes for network for deposit. So networks for withdrawal is the first exchange and networks for deposit is the second exchange that we're working with. And also we have withdrawal network status and deposit network status. So uh, here you have the greens and the reds. So that means for some reason an exchange, the withdrawal or deposit of the currency can be closed. And that is not a good sign of arbitrage opportunity. So what, I, what I'd like to do as a beginner in arbitrage, I would uh, select withdraw is open and deposit is open to make sure that everything will go smooth. And probably I will even hit the button network compatibility to make sure that there is no bridging involved in my arbitrage deals. So for example, if I have uh, Ethereum network for the withdrawal, I would have Ethereum network for deposit. Of course, there are workarounds. So even if you have something like Ethereum on one side and Hack on another th on on the other side, you could probably use bridges and other manipulation techniques to make profits. But it is made for like more professional and sophisticated traders, not for the for the beginners. Right. Now let's talk about how we calculate volume prices and spreads. So let's imagine that I want to use Binance and Gate as my tracked exchanges. And here I have this pair, ESG USDT. So it's some kind of fun token. All right. So here we have a profit of almost 2%, volume of 2,700 uh, US, USDT. And, uh, now let's go to the exchanges website and see how do we calculate all that. So for example, on Binance we have a price of 3.27 cents. All right. Now, right now I am on Binance and here we have an order book. So those are the orders that uh, trading bots or real people have placed on this token. So that is the prices that they want to uh, sell their tokens for. So what we do is we uh, here we find an average price of 3.27. So that's something like here. And here we have that we are able to buy uh, almost $8,000 worth of PSG by uh, this average price of 3.27. All right. But on gate, we are tracking the 3.33 uh, price. And here, what should we do? We should also uh, look at the order book, but not on the red ones, but on the green ones. So those are the uh, buy orders. So people want to buy uh, tokens here. So here we also want to find the average price that we track. So it is about 3.3. It maybe have changed a bit right now. All right, and here we have a total USD volume of $2,400. Uh, 
So that means that the uh, volume here that we track is the minimal one from those two values 7000 on Binance and 2000 and something on gate. So that is where we uh, find the volume The profit here is the median amount of profit that you will have on all those trades. So you must uh, buy all of these orders and uh, sell all of those orders here on the other exchange and the average profit that you will have on those deals is about 2% here All right, so uh, some advice for the beginners to choose the arbitrage deal when you have this kind of spread you think all right I will go for that deal, but you must check uh, some things. So for example here Gate, for some reason, is not uh, giving us the network for deposit. But we need to check that. So uh, each exchange has its own interface, but on Gate, for example, you can find all the networks of withdrawal and deposit here on the Gate website under the fees uh, webpage. So uh, here we have deposit and draw, and let's see what um networks is psg uh, traded on all right so it's only uh binance chain that means that probably we will not be able to easily conduct this trade because on binance uh bnb chain is actually closed right now all right so this is the basic check that you want to do with every every pair that you will to trade all right i think that's probably it that's enough for today I think if you have any problems or any questions, feel free to contact our support. They will help you and guide you through this arbitrage journey.